All right, thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our webinar on data sources for land surveying. Um, you can go to the next slide, Amanda. Uh, just a little bit of quick housekeeping before we get started. Uh, the slides and the recording from today will be available. Check your email tomorrow um, for a follow-up from us. Just a reminder, your microphone is muted, but throughout the presentation um, or at the end, you can submit any questions that you may have by clicking the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. And at the end, you will also have an opportunity if you wanna ask a question orally, um, you can click the raise hand button to be unmuted at that time. Next slide. So quick agenda for today, um, Amanda is gonna give just an introduction and some information about the different instrumentation. We're gonna cover GIS and land surveying, the sources of research for patents, deeds, and plats, all about field work, the necessity of good geodetic control networks, the tools in a modern surveyor's toolbox, and then finally, final deliverables. And at the end, we will have some time for a Q&A. So with that, I will hand it over to Amanda. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in today. My name is Amanda Allred, and I'm a licensed professional land surveyor in six Western states, including Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, and Utah. I have a degree in geomatics from the University of Alaska Anchorage and a Bachelor of Science degree in surveying engineering from New Mexico State University. And I've worked in the land surveying industry for the past 25 years. I'm a survey director at DUDEC, and I'm also currently serving as the president of the National Society of Professional Surveyors, which has approximately 17,000 members nationwide. These photos roughly span my career from an internship with the Bureau of Land Management in Alaska in 1998, to owning and operating a surveying firm in Silver City, New Mexico in 2008, to working for the United States Army Corps of Engineers in 2018. As I was putting this presentation together, I noticed that these photos also provide an excellent timeline for the advancement of the profession of tools over that same time period. In the 1998 photograph taken outside of Sitka, Alaska, I'm pictured with a total station. This EDM or electronic measuring device was used to turn angles and distances while we're we were meandering or surveying and mapping islands in Southeast Alaska. The next photo from 2008 is one of me running an RTK rover while surveying and mining claims in remote New Mexico. This technological advancement really enabled surveyors to be set free from the relatively stationary line of sight total station. The addition of RTK or real-time kinematic GPS increased our flexibility significantly, and we were free to roam away from the total station to take measurements behind hills, trees, and buildings. The last photo is from 2018, and I'm carrying a robotic total station. This equipment includes terrestrial or ground-based scanning and remote sensing capabilities. The robotic setup also made surveying a one-man game enabling one person to do the same job that required two people to accomplish when using the original total station. What all these tools have in common is their use of survey controllers. Survey controllers are also known as data collectors and are the devices used to start and stop the surveying process. They store distances and angles in a COGO or coordinate geometry method with elevations. This gives you X, Y, and Z coordinates, which are also referred to as northing, easting, and elevations. These tools revolutionized the land surveying industry, changing from direct measurement tools like steel tapes and theodolites to indirect electronic tools that calculate these measurements for us. That said, all the principles and practices of traditional land surveying have remained the same and are the basis and principles behind these modern technologies. 
Today, you will find all these devices within a surveyor's so-called toolbox, along with a few other toys that we get to play with today in 2022. Next, let's go over GIS, our Geographic Information Systems, and its role in the land surveying process at DUDEC. First, what are the different G GIS data sources that are associated with land surveying? Oops. The BLM GCDB Geographic Coordinate Database, the BLM Original Patents and Field Notes, NGS, Google Earth, and Esri layers for horizontal and vertical monuments, USGS online LIDAR imagery, and state and local base mapping data. The BLM Cadastral Survey has built an entire database from the public land survey records called the Geographic Coordinate Database. This database contains geographical information such as latitude and longitude, for rectangular surveys and special resurveys, such as mineral, homestead entry, and track surveys. The GCDB can graphically display data in Esri software tools and the Esri ArcGIS Field Maps app for cell phones. In addition to the original plats of survey and BLM field notes, the GCDB database is a great place to begin building search areas for land surveys. NGS also has a handy database with Google Earth overlays to locate horizontal and vertical control points. This data is also imported into field maps for survey groups to easily search for and locate corners or monuments with or without cell phone service. Our team also uses Field Maps, a free Esri downloadable app. First, the GIS team uploads any search points from these data sources. Then the field crews can easily access these files on the go and associate any photographs they take of the found monuments within the app. Also pictured here is our internal portal. It includes groups for online resources and a general web map of our projects. This data is accessible by our office personnel for QAQC. Field data is transferred to the office in real time as soon as the photos are taken in the field. If office analysis have a question or more data is needed, they can immediately receive data compiled by crews in the field. If you'd like more information about how DUDEC's online mapping portal can help you with your land survey or construction monitoring process for your project, my colleague Joshua Burroughs is hosting a webinar next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Put it in the chat if you're interested in attending and we'll send you the registration link. USGS also has online LIDAR data that our GIS team utilizes as a base map or starting point. This data will eventually get updated by actual survey data. Still, before beginning a project, it is very helpful to establish what the topography looks like before sending field crews out. It is also extremely helpful when estimating project bids so that we can provide an accurate cost estimate associated with the entire project. State and local jurisdictions are also a valuable source for map data. These jurisdictions have compiled land data information, including deeds, parcel ID numbers, instrument numbers, and graphical representations of the size and shape of the properties in question. But remember, any data source is only a graphical representation of what could be occurring in the area. The source data must be verified on the ground during the survey process. That said, all of these sources can be combined to form a ground basis for the start of the project before field work begins. The most important thing to remember when compiling all of this data is to consider the reference systems that they are built on, which could include latitude and longitudinal information, state plane coordinates, or special localized systems. It is incredibly important to have GIS specialists that can ensure all data works cohesively. 
Next, we'll talk about sources of research for patents, deeds, and plats. Many of the plats of survey that created the public land system in Western states are available from the Bureau of Land Management's website, including field notes. Though many states and counties provide access to plats and deeds of record online, many have not gone entirely digital. And a lot of record research is still done the old fashioned way in the local courthouses or city halls. If for some reason, the plats of survey are not available online, someone must go in person to the field office in that region and print them. Is it, all, it is also vital to communicate with the landowners and local utilities, including railroads. These sources often go overlooked, but shouldn't be because many maps and plats exist that were never recorded in local recordation offices. Once these maps, plats, and deeds of record have been downloaded or printed, they can then get drawn up the old fashioned way in CAD based software. This allows the GIS data to then be merged with the official deeds and search areas shared with field crews. To reiterate, as with any compilation of information, knowing what coordinate systems the data originated on is key to the project's continued success. You may be wondering how long the research typically takes and how to know when to stop. The research project can take days or weeks depending on numerous factors such as the size, the location, and improvements on the subject parcel, as well as what information is available. The professional land surveyor must discern when enough care and consideration has been given to all sources of record information and then move the project forward whenever they are comfortable doing so. Once the research is complete, next up is the field work, or as I like to say, the fun work. Field work is when the magic happens and all of the time spent performing the necessary research pays off. Professional discretion is applied to accept, reject, or remonument missing property corners and interpret how they apply to the record data. This is when the control network for all the surveying measurements is laid out. These points are typically based on the NGS control gleaned from your research. The team now will physically locate on the ground the proper horizontal and or vertical control monuments to pro properly establish vertical and horizontal coordinates that will control or tie down all the data that will be gathered from the site. These coordinates need to be as accurate as possible to maintain the precisions and accuracies required for the entire survey. So if your survey requires horizontal and vertical accuracies within one tenth of a foot, it is good practice to ensure the control data meets or exceeds these tolerances. To ensure positional accuracy, a geodetic control network should be established with baseline data based on NGS control monuments or using NOAA's online positioning user service also known as OPA Solutions. The service provides free access to high accuracy National Spatial Reference System coordinates. To use OPUS, a surveyor simply uploads the GPS data file collected with a survey grade GPS receiver to the OPUS upload page. The computed National Spatial Reference System position is then delivered via email, as I mentioned previously, this data serves as the basis for the COGO geometry, also known as Northing, Easting, and Elevation Data, or XYZ coordinate information. Oops. Once your control network is established around the perimeter of your project area, field crews use, utilize a toolbox of several different measuring techniques, including a total station, GPS, static and RTK, robotic total stations and terrestrial scanners, GPR, our underground utility locate devices, and drone, our UAV LIDAR data. The total station 
is one of the most frequently used surveying instruments. The station is made up of a digital theodolite, an electrical, electronic distance measuring device, and a microprocessor with a memory unit. The digital theodolite initially introduced in the late 1960s by Carl Zeiss Incorporated helped set the platform for modern field data collection and processing. Fully automated surveying was then made possible when the digital theodolite was housed within a built-in electronic distance measuring unit. This combined instrument was called the electronic tachometer, but Hewlett Packard introduced the name total station and immediately caught on with the profession. GPS static or RTK real-time kinematic positioning is the application of surveying to correct for common errors in current satellite navigation systems. This technology calculates the time it takes for a GPS signal to travel from the satellite in orbit to the GPS receiver on Earth. RTK systems use a single base station receiver and multiple mobile units. Essentially, the system calculates the distance between the base unit and the mobile RTK, and data is collected based on this mathematical process. This technology greatly increased the surveyor's mobility. As long as the base unit and the RTK units can successfully transmit data to one another, data can be generated and logged into the controller unit to calculate horizontal and vertical positions for any features a land surveyor would like to map. Robotic total stations with terrestrial scanning capabilities also freed the surveyor from being stuck directly behind the instrument. This advancement allowed a single person to operate the instrument. Most modern robotic total stations also include LIDAR scanning capabilities so that photographs and digital imagery can be overlaid with electronic distance measuring devices. Ground penetrating radar devices detect variations in the composition of ground material. If the electromagnetic impulse hits an object, the density of the object reflects, refracts, and scatters the signal. The receiver detects the returning signals and records variations within them. GPR is a growing and changing field of scientific data collection with new technological advancements every year. The one thing that all of these various techniques have in common is the need to establish good geodetic control points as a basis for the data that is being collected. Using well-established control points and, imp and implementing thorough land surveying techniques ensures that any data can be relied upon for design work. Last but not least is drone or unmanned aerial ve vehicle data collection. Also called UAVs, these design devices are operated by a human pilot on the ground and are a vital tool for capturing imagery effectively and safely. Almost anyone can fly a drone and collect imagery data, but the real skill lies in integrating that aerial data with your other surveying information. In order to use UAVs to measure and accurately map features, the UAV must be properly calibrated and based off of ground control. A professional land surveyor oversees this calibration process, working with UAV pilots, GIS personnel, and field crews to ensure that any data that is captured is useful as a basis for measuring techniques. The ground-based control must meet or exceed the accuracies and precisions necessary for your project for the imagery to be a useful part of the surveying database. Otherwise, all you have are pretty pictures that aren't very useful. Here are a couple of examples of data information that our GIS and UAV teams collaborate to produce. The first photo is taken after a Hawaiian landslide. Dudek flew LIDAR and took pictures a day after the slide and then again a few days later. This next image is the topographic information that was extracted from the UAV flight to show the damage. 
This image represents the landslide graphically and was captured safely without having to send crews into tough, dangerous terrain. The second example is from power line surveys that were also flown with UAVs. This image shows survey accuracy on the power lines and utility poles that were mapped from the LIDAR data. The research, control, monumentation, interpretation, fieldwork, and data analysis culminates into a precise, accurate survey of your project area. Once all of the elements have been brought together, a final deliverable can be complied, compiled. The final product may consist of physical maps and plans, but usually contains a combination of all of the information I've described into CAD software, which electronically displays the features of the subject property, including property lines, topography, and surface features, both natural and man-made such as buildings, roadways, utilities, fences, lakes, rivers, and streams. These packages give designers, including architects and engineers, a basis to build from. The more accurate and complete the drawings are, the smoother your project will proceed. Change orders, complications, and litigation can all be avoided by making sure all the steps are followed completely and correctly. Preparing final deliverables is the last and most satisfying step in the land surveying process. It's fulfilling to hand off completed projects knowing due diligence was taken to ensure the quality of these final products. DUDEX offers all the services I mentioned and has experienced licensed land surveyors across North America and Hawaii. Our team specializes in ALTA NSPS surveys LIDAR topographic surveys, design level mapping, and web-based mapping solutions. The team has provided mapping services since 1980 and continues evolving to leverage new data collection methodologies and delivery systems. DUDEC is a 100% employee-owned planning, environmental, and engineering consulting firm. We were founded in 1980 and have more than 700 employees and 16 offices nationwide. We have projects in all 50 states and our mapping and surveying teams are strategically located across the country to mobilize quickly for jobs in any state. Here's a quick introduction to some of our surveying and mapping team members. Joshua Burroughs, our survey production manager, oversees surveying related field and office operations and synchronizes drafting efforts with DUDEC team members. He also manages product deadlines, communicates with clients and product, project managers, and is responsible for project delivery, including files and information. As I mentioned, Joshua is presenting a webinar next week showcasing our online mapping portal and how it can streamline your surveying project. Put it in the chat if you'd like the link to register to attend. Craig Clouet is a GIS coordinator and has more than 20 years of experience working in the industry. This experience includes working for Esri, developing systems design and cloud applications for large institutions, including the state of Hawaii. Steve Hocart is our mapping and surveying practice director. Steve founded the land surveying program at DUDEC and has extensive experience in both GIS and land surveying project management, including strategic master planning, land use permitting, GIS analysis, and mapping. Thank you all for taking the time to listen in. I hope this presentation was useful and you've learned a bit more about the professional land surveying process and how multiple data collection methods are integrated to produce a richer final deliverable. Do any of you have any questions for me? Feel free to, free to type your question in the Q&A box or click the raise hand button to be unmuted to speak. Thanks again for tuning in today. Check your email tomorrow for a recording of this presentation and the slides. Additionally, don't hesitate to get in touch with me or Steve Hocart 
DUDEC's Mapping and Surveying Practice Director with any questions or concerns you may have. 